welcome again uh, in my course power electronics application in power system. In the last lecture, I, I discussed uh, uh, what is the basic concept of active and reactive power of AC electric circuit. All right. Now, in this lecture, I, I will discuss what is uh, reactive power compensation and uh, what is the significance of reactive power compensation in power systems. Okay. So, in this lecture, we will learn what is reactive power compensation. Okay. So, the goals of this lecture is number one to learn what is reactive power compensator and what is the significance of reactive power compensation. So, this we will uh, try to understand. Okay. So, if I summarize what we uh, uh, learned in the last lecture that uh, in a single pitch AC circuit, uh, the if you take the average of the instantaneous power, then whatever you will get that is uh, defined as the active power, right? And this active power always is uh, either uh, zero or positive. Okay, so it cannot be negative. Whereas uh, in in uh, 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 the concept of reactive power is that uh, it is it is the peak value of the pulsating component P2. All right. So we are in, in in the last class we discussed that the instantaneous power. If we uh, just uh, derive its equation, we will have two components. One is P1, another is P2. All right. And the peak value of the P2 is defined as the reactive power. So in this lecture, we will learn what is the significance of reactive power. The active the significance of active power is already discussed in the last lecture. It is it is the useful power which is being converted to some other form of energy. For example, if you uh, if your load is uh, a electric motor, so the active power is the power the motor consumes to to convert it to it to mechanical work. All right. Now, what is the significance of reactive power? That is what we will discuss in this lecture. So, in this lecture, in the previous lecture, we have two uh, expressions of this active and reactive power. I will rewrite this again. So, active power is equal to P capital P which is equal to V m I m divided by 2 cos phi and reactive power we got expression that is capital Q is equal to V m I m by 2 sin phi. Now, what is V m and I m? V m is the peak value of the voltage. Okay. It is a sinusoidally varying voltage we considered. So, V m is the peak value of the sinusoidally varying voltage. 
okay. And I m is the peak value of the sinusoidally varying current which is drawn by the single phase load, right. Now, this we know that this, this can be written as V m divided by root 2 multiplied by I m divided by root 2 cos phi. Similarly, this can be written as V m that is reactive power is equal to V m divided by root 2 multiplied by I m divided by root 2 sin phi. Right. Okay. Now, this V m divided by root 2 is the RMS value of the voltage. We know that it is the RMS value, we represent it with capital V, simple capital V. And I m divided by root 2 is basically the RMS value of the current. So, we represent with capital I. So, the whole expression becomes V m I V I cap cos phi. Here also, the expression becomes V i sin phi, where V is equal to V m divided by root 2, which is R m s of voltage. I hope you are comfortable with the R m s value of the voltage that is taught in uh, basic electrical engineering course. Similarly, capital I is equal to I m divided by root 2, which is equal to R m s of current. Okay. Now, also you remember that in the last lecture, I, I uh, mainly discussed uh, a time domain uh, relationship of voltage and current of a single phase and later on in as uh, of a three phase system. Here also uh, uh, we, we will discuss a uh, similar concept, but the representation would be different. Okay. So, uh, in the last lecture I discuss uh, in time domain representation, now we will discuss a different representation. Okay. That uh, representation is called frequency domain or phasor domain representation. Okay. So, if, if, if my time domain circuit is something like this, which I discussed in the last class, where this is representing the instantaneous voltage V t, which we considered as V m sin omega t. And for this polarity, if the direction of current is somewhere here, then this is the instantaneous component of the current and this is what the load. So, this representation, this representation is time domain representation of single fetch AC circuit. Okay. Now, this, this expression what we get as a active power and reactive power, this expression we get with the analysis of this uh, sing time domain uh, representation of single fetch AC circuit. Now, in this lecture, we will also see or recap this idea of phasor domain representation. Okay. Where this same circuit will represent in a phasor domain. So, this is the voltage source, this is the load. So, now we will represent this voltage with the RMS voltage and this V bar it represent the phasor representation of source voltage.
ok. Now, for this polarity of this voltage, suppose current flowing through this is represented by I, then this I is basically the phasor representation of current drawn by the load. Remember, this is the load okay, which is drawing this amount of current and this bar V bar and I bar this represents the phasor quantities. It means that they have some magnitude and they also have some phase angle. Okay. Now, in, in order to relate this phasor domain representation with this time domain representation, what we will do is that we will draw a phasor diagram and we will also see that whether this uh, phasor domain representation uh, rep actually represents the expression of active and reactive power that we derived in the last lecture. Okay. So, suppose if we consider V that is the source voltage, it will have some RMS value of uh, magnitude and it will have some phase which is represented by 0. Okay. Similarly, uh, if we go back and check this expression of uh, this current. So, this current we considered in the last lecture I t was equal to I m sin omega t minus phi. Okay if v, uh, v t is equal to this, we consider I m is equal to that. Okay. So, what we know that, that if the V m is our reference voltage or reference phasor, then I m will lag with respect to this reference voltage at an angle phi, where this phi is called uh, power factor angle. Right? So, we will represent I that is the phasor current is equal to RMS value of the current at an angle minus phi. Okay. Now, according to the definition that in phasor domain that uh, we have a relationship of active and reactive power with this phasor voltage and current. What is that relationship? So, according to phasor domain representation we know that complex power s is equal to v phasor i phasor conjugate okay now, if we put this V phasor and I phasor expression over here, so this will be V at an angle 0. So, I conjugate means this is I multiplied by I at an angle minus phi and the conjugate of that. So, this will be become V I at an angle phi. So, which is equal to V I cos phi plus V i sin phi. Okay. So, if I convert this uh, this that is this expression to this expression, this expression is in polar form. If we convert it to Cartesian form, we will have this expression. Now, if we look at the expression of active and reactive power that we derive from this time domain expression, then we can write that this is okay, there would be some complex operator j over here because it is a complex quantity. So, this will be p plus j q. Okay. So, where p is our, our active power and q is our reactive power. Okay. So, you can see that this uh, time domain representation actually uh, set the foundation of the concept of active and reactive power and that is being transferred to 
uh, phasor domain repre representation to directly find out the relationship of active and reactive power. Now, coming back to the main goal that what I have set in this course that what is reactive power compensation. So, in order to understand that let us take an example. Okay. Then let us take a numerical example. Okay. In this numerical example, uh, suppose I have same circuit, uh, same voltage source, but we have different ty uh, types of the loads. So, suppose this is case A in which I have a voltage source connected to a load load is represented by a rectangular box okay. and we will consider the voltage here at V and for this polarity the current drawn by the load is I. Okay. So, what we will consider what we will consider here as V is equal to RMS value of this V is equal to 220 volt. Okay. and I is equal to the RMS value of the current is equal to 10 ampere and the power factor which is represented by this P stop F that is power factor of the load is equal to 1 that is unity. Okay. Now, we will take another case. That is case B. We will have same circuit. So, this is the rectangular box which is which represents the load and this one is sinusoidal voltage source. Okay. And this, this voltage is also equal to V and for this polarity uh, of the voltage current drawn by the load is equal to I. Okay. So, this is load that was also load. Now, here V is same the RMS value of voltage is same as that of case A that is 220 volt. I is also same that is RMS value of the current is also same that is 10 ampere. However, this power factor of the load is a different it is 0 0.8 lagging. Okay. So, only difference of this case and this case A is that the power factor are different in both the cases. In one case the load is having unity power factor and another case load is having a power factor of 0.8 lagging. Right? Now, what we will do is that we will determine the active and reactive power for this type of load. So, first of all active power consumption for this case. P is equal to as we know the expression P is equal to V i cos phi from here. So, this is V i cos phi. So, this is equal to 220 volt multiplied by 10 ampere and power factor is unity here. So, this is 1. So, that is equal to 2200 watt or 2.2 kilowatt. Okay. And reactive power for this case is Q is equal to V i sin phi which is equal to 2 to 0 multiplied by 10. If cos phi is equal to 1, the sin phi will be 0. 
so that is 0 ok all right now for case b also we will determine active power so active power for case b which is having a, a load of a power factor 0 0.8 lagging so this active power will be equal to p is equal to v i cos phi which is equal to 220 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 0 0.8 which is equal to 1760 watt or 1.76 kilowatt and the reactive power q will be equal to v i sin phi which is equal to 220 multiplied by 10. Now, if cos phi is equal to 0.8 then sin phi would be equal to 0.6. So, this will be equal to 1 3 2 0 volt ampere reactive or 1.32 k V A R. ok. So, that is what uh, the, the two cases uh, one in one case we have uh, a load which is having unity power factor in another case we have a load of 0.8 power factor you look at uh, due to this power factor both the cases having different active and reactive power consumption. In, in case A active power consumption was 2.2 kilowatt, in case B it was it is 1.76 kilowatt whereas in uh, case A reactive power consumption is 0, in case B reactive power consumption is non-zero which is equal to uh, 1.32 kVr. Now, what we can conclude from this, what we can uh, observe from these two case studies. Let me, uh, let me put this into like this. Suppose this uh, you know uh, is the source of the uh, this particular circuit, this is also the source of the this particular circuit and normally the source of the electric circuit in our home, in our uh, uh, we are a domestic customer. So, for us the source is the uh, power supplied by the electric utility right. Now, in this particular case the source which is representing this electric utility is sending uh, this volt ampere of volt ampere of 220 multiplied by 10 that is 2200 volt ampere. So, that is what the power uh, it is sending by the source. Here also for this particular case the source is also sending that 2200 volt ampere from the source end. However, in case A the active power consumption is 2.2 kilowatt uh, and in case B the active power consumption is 1.76 which is much lesser than this uh, this 2.2. So, what we can uh, observe from this is in, in case A and also in the case B in both the cases the source is sending same amount of volt ampere ok. So, if the source is our electric utility then electric utility is sending same uh, amount of volt ampere. However, due to the different types of the load case a is consuming uh, case a is basically consuming 2.2 kilowatt but case b is consuming lower that is 1.76 kilowatt this primarily happens due to this power factor okay now we all know that uh, this this uh, electric utility uh, uh, sells us the power and uh, we the consumer we consume the power and according to our consumption the electric utility uh, set the billing ok. And if you look at for domestic customers 
the electricity billing will depend upon how much active uh, power you are consumed multiplied by the time. So, it is basically based upon the amount of energy that we are consuming. Now, how can we get this energy value? This energy is nothing but that uh, how much active power we are consuming multiplied by the duration. Okay. Now, of course, uh, from one duration to another duration active power consumption gets changed. So, for every hour for example, if we consider that active power consumption remains same, then what we do is that to find out this uh, net energy consumption, what we do is uh, we, we multiply hourly uh, active power multiplied this by this duration and sum up. Okay. So, obviously, suppose uh, this situation uh, sustains for 10 hours suppose, then for this particular case the energy consumption, energy consumption will be 2.2 kilowatt multiplied by 10 hour. So, that is 22 kilowatt hour of energy, often we call it as units of energy. Okay. So, it will consume 2 point, uh, 22 unit of energy. Whereas, for this case V, the energy consumption was this active power that is 1.76 multiplied by this 10 hour which is equal to 17.6 kilowatt hour of energy or 17.6 unit of energy which is uh, lower than this. So, if you compare these two cases, case A and case B, in both the cases uh, source is sending same amount of volt ampere, uh, but uh, ultimately when the source is uh, going to bill uh, the electric electricity consumption of the load, this K in case A it is getting the price of 22 kilowatt, whereas in case B it will be getting a price of 17.6 kilowatt hour. Okay. So, which would be lo lower than this and this primarily happens because of because of the this power factor which is non unity. So, when we have a non unity power factor load, so the total energy consumption would be less than the unity power factor load. Okay. So, accordingly this electri electric utility will get lower revenue due to this non unity type of the load. But of course, uh, what type of load we will be using being a customer that will be not decided by the electric utility. right? So, that will be in our hand. So, therefore, due to our specific nature of this electricity consumption, electric utility will get lower revenue if, if the load is of significantly low of lower power factor. Okay? So, that is the point I want to raise over here. Now, if we want to keep the summary of our observation. Number one observation will be in both cases source is sending same volt ampere, V A represents volt ampere. However, the energy consumption consumption of case A is higher. Okay. Since, in case B, the load power factor is of non-unity. So, third summary is that thus the electricity supplier electricity supplier 
will earn less revenue when the load power factor is non unity okay now look at this uh, both the cases here the so the rating of this uh, this generator for this case a and rating of this generator in case b are identical so that means the electric utility who is supplying power needs to set same amount of uh, infrastructure uh, for both the cases in order to supply power in case A as well as in case B. However, uh, by, by uh, setting identical infrastructure, it is getting less revenue when the load power factor is non-unity, load power factor is non-unity and it is lagging in nature. So, here is the concept of this, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, significance of the reactive power consumption of the load. So, in one case load uh, due to this non-unity of this uh, load power factor, the electricity supplier will earn less revenue in spite of uh, setting same amount of infrastructure for both the cases. So, that is what the uh, point I want to establish here. So, uh, that is what in fact the difference. This is one point I want to establish. Another point is that here if you look at in case A, its reactive power consumption of the load is 0. Okay? So, therefore, this load due to its unity power factor is not consuming any reactive power. Okay? So, the generator for this case A need not to provide any reactive power uh, by the source. Okay? Whereas, in case B, since we have a significantly high uh, reactive power consumed by the load due to non-unity power factor and who will supply this reactive power? There is no one except the source to supply this reactive power. So, therefore, uh, this, this source has to supply both active power and reactive power and since uh, it is supplying uh, both the power, it is active power uh, you know the this energy revenue due to this active power consumption is reduced okay? and that is what the another point that we, we can uh, find over here. So, if we write it here, so in case B the generator the source or the generator has to supply the reactive power of that is 1.32 kVR to the load. Okay. So, this or whereas Whereas, in case A, the source is relieved, is not, does not require to supply or we should write it here, whereas in case A, there is no need of reactive power, there is no need of reactive power to be slapped from the source. That is what important uh, observation that we can find. 
okay so generator in case b or the source in case b is overburdened to supply both active and reactive power right whereas uh, in in uh, a case a the generator is relieved to supply any sort of reactive power and that is beneficial in terms of this energy consumption energy consumption for which normally the billing depends okay uh, electricity price depends okay for domestic customer i am talking about so this is what another important observation so in both the cases uh, we we have a difference of the uh, consumption pattern primarily because of the type of this nature of the load okay but uh, in in reality in practical scenario uh, every generator or every source is uh, designed in such a way that uh, it is it can be operated to supply uh, certain amount of reactive power okay so it is the electricity uh, utility electric utility they know that this reactive power supply would be required um, by by uh, for every types of uh, load which are having non unity power factor and primarily loads are of inductive so that is what the important point i want to raise over here and that is what one of the significance of the consideration of reactive power over here okay so here although in the last class or in the last lecture i discuss that in in uh, if you look at this uh, expression of this uh, p2 which we uh, derived from the instantaneous power uh, its its average is zero means one half cycle it is coming if it is coming from the source another half cycle it is returning back to the source so one may think of that uh, why what is the significance of reactive power then why should of should we bother because it is having zero average but here you can see that uh, for this in case b for non unity uh, power factor load whenever it demands the reactive power the system or the source has to supply okay and that is what the significance of the reactive power right now this phenomena would be more predominant when we will go for higher uh, load demand so here uh, we consider a very uh, you know nominal load demand of uh, that 1.76 kilowatt or something like that suppose your uh, if you visit a industry process industry consider uh, which in which a large number of motors are running with significant rating then you will see that uh, this overall power factor of the load will be much lower okay so in those cases uh, this this source or the utility need to supply it a, a huge amount of reactive power okay so this is one thing that one needs to understand okay now in the next part what we will discuss is what do you mean by reactive power compensation and how it can be done in order to discuss this so we'll taken another example in order to establish this let us take an another example let us consider we have a source also we have a load that is uh, consuming uh, uh, both active and reactive power that is uh, something uh, similar to a, a non unity lagging type of load and we also have uh, a, a connecting cable okay so let us draw this we have a source we have a connecting cable connecting cable is represented by a rectangular box we have a load over here okay and we will represent it as a phasor domain representation so so this in a rms value of the voltage is v and for this polarity the current drawn by the load is i okay 
they are phasor quantities that is why I put bar on the top of this V and I. Okay. Let us consider that this, this is connecting cable and we assume that it is simply represented by uh, its uh, model by uh, this x, j x and this is what our load, this is what our source. Okay. So, this is the source and this is the load which is which are connected through a connecting cable and this connected cable will model with simply j x. So, when I do so, so automatically we take a assumption that assumption that the resistance of cable is 0. Okay. And the voltage at this load end, suppose it is V L, voltage at this load end is V L. Okay. Now, what we will do is that in order to analyze this system, we will apply KVL at this loop, we will apply this KVL at this loop. So, applying KVL, what we will get? Uh, we will get this V minus this voltage drop in the cable which is minus J i multiplied by x is equal to the load end voltage that is VL. Here V and I are phasor. Okay. Now, I hope that all of you are comfortable with phasor diagram. Okay. So, in for to develop the phasor diagram, what we need? We need to first consider someone as a reference and we need to develop the algebraic equation by using KVL or KCL. So, here already we have developed this algebraic equation. What we need to do in order to draw this to draw this phasor diagram? we consider load end voltage as reference. Okay. So, therefore, we will consider V L is equal to its RMS value at an angle 0. Okay. So, to draw the phasor di diagram, first we have to draw the reference which is V L. Okay. And as, as we know this load is lagging in nature, we already considered uh, uh, load which is lagging and pr most of the practical loads are of lagging in nature. So, the current will lag with respect to this voltage by some angle, let us consider this angle is phi. So, this is our reference phasor, this is our current phasor. From these two, we, we can find out the phasor of the source voltage. How can we find out? You see from this equation, we can write capital V, which is the voltage at, the, uh, at this source is equal to V L plus J i x, where j i x is the voltage drop due to the connecting cable. All right. So, uh, now what where will be the location of this j i x? So, if this is i, when you multiply j operator, suppose this is i, if this is i phasor, then j i phasor will be 90 degree leading with respect to i. This is somewhat known to you. So, j i x phasor will be somewhat in this direction j i x. Okay. Now, if we add these two which is representing j i x, then what we will get? 
what we will get that is the source voltage that is V. Okay. Now, what you can see is that note the magnitude of V and V L are not same. So, looking at this phasor diagram, this is the phasor diagram we developed. One can comment that this V and V L, their magnitude are not different and, and you can see that this V L is lower than V. Okay. So, that is happening, uh, why it is happening that why this V L and uh, V L is lower than V? Primarily because there is a voltage drop in the connecting cable. Okay. So, this is happening due to the voltage drop in the connecting cable. Okay. So, that means that what the voltage the source is supplying, the load end voltage is not same of that voltage. So, load end voltage is different to the voltage supplied by the source. So, that is visible from this phasor diagram. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, it, it is something like that you can imagine on all of our home, we are a domestic customer, we need a single phase AC supply from the electric utility and the rating of this single phase supply is uh, suppose 230 volt 50 hertz in India. So, what we expect is that in the plug point uh, that we have from where uh, we, we, we are connecting different devices like uh, fan, light, etcetera, there we have 230 volt 50 hertz supply. But uh, as you know that uh, this, this our home is normally located far away from the uh, distribution transformer, even distribution transformer is far away from the, uh, the substation from where the electric ut utility supply as the power. Okay. And due to that, due to the physical distance, the uh, this wire or cable uh, over it, either over it wire or the underground cable, the electric uh, utility are using to bring us uh, to bring power to uh, our home, uh, there is some voltage drop. So, uh, if in order to uh, uh, ensure that in our home we, we uh, there is 230 volt, then at their end the voltage supply would be higher or if they supply 230 volt equivalent single page at their uh, location of this substation, then uh, in our home this voltage will be less and that is happening. Okay. And this, this is primarily happening, uh, one of the reasons is that we have uh, this connecting cable, we have overhead line in which there is some amount of voltage getting dropped. Okay. So, and that is why this V and V L are different. Now, this reactive power consumption, uh, reactive power compensation is a process to create a uh, condition such that this V L would be equal to V. Okay. So, load end voltage would be equal to V. How it is possible? By connecting a external compensator near to the load end. So, this C represents C represents compensator. Okay. Now, what this C will compensate? C will primarily comp compensate the reactive power. Now, this compensator will primarily uh, compensate the reactive power demand by the load locally at the load end, so that V L and V become equal. Okay. Now, let us see that why, who is basically responsible for uh, the, uh, you know, unequal values of V L and V. So, if we just take a, suppose this is my origin and this is the supply voltage. If we just uh, by taking the, you know, supply voltage or source voltage as a radius, if we take a arc, if we draw it arc over here, then we can see that there is a this much amount of mismatch of the supply voltage and uh, source voltage. Okay. Now, this mismatch we can divide into two com component, one is this component, another is that component. This component 
we will consider as del V 1 okay? and that component if I draw it in a different color to make it visible that component if I represent del V 2. So, that means due to del V 1 and del V 2 the V L is lower to V the supply voltage. Okay. So, if we can somehow this compensate this del V 1 and del V 2 then our so load end voltage would be equal to the source end voltage. This is exactly done by this reactive power compensator. This is exactly possible to do this reactive power compensator. Now, let us see that what is this del V 1. Now, since this is phi, this angle is phi. So, one can find out the, that angle is also phi. Okay. So, basically this del V 1 is basically equal to its magnitude is equal to I x sin phi, I x sin phi. Okay. Now, here I is the current drawn by the load, x is the reactance of the cable and uh, sin phi you know phi is the power factor angle. Now, you can see over here is that if I resolve this capital uh, this I phasor into two part, one is this part that is called out of phase component or perpendicular component and this is in phase component, then this component is basically equal to I sin phi. Okay. So, this I sin phi multiplied by this cable reactance is, is equal to del V 1 which we need to compensate. So, that the difference between this V L and V can be reduced. Right? Now, in order to do so, what is usually done is this I sin phi is basically this, this component of this current, this is I sin phi. If we just uh, arrange uh, this a compensator which can draw this I sin phi equivalent component of the current which is we can draw this I sin phi equivalent component of the current from at this load end then this I sin phi and that I sin phi will be nullified and therefore, del V 1 would can be eliminated. So, the difference of this V and V L would be somewhat reduced right? and this process is called reactive power compensation. So, reactive power compensation I write here reactive power compensation is a is an approach or a process we can say to locally supply some amount of reactive power demand to locally supply some amount of reactive power demand. Okay. So, how it is happening? You can see that this compensator will design such that it will draw a I sin phi component of current, but it, it should be 180 degree uh, phase difference with respect to this I sin phi. So, that this I sin phi and the I sin phi drawn by the load can be nullified. So, since the load is of uh, inductive in nature, so this compensator at that moment should act as a uh, 180 degree phase difference of the inductive load. So, which is naturally some kind of leading power factor system or some kind of capacitive system we can consider, you can understand. So, this process is called reactive power compensation. Now, there are two types of reactive power compensation there are two types of two types of reactive power compensation
one is called load reactive compensation or simply load reactive power compensation another is system reactive compensation or system compensation so there are two types of load reactive power compensation so by uh, connecting the compensator which will uh, inject that uh, uh, 180 degree out of phase of current component of this uh, load current uh, that is i sin phi it can mitigate the difference of this del v1 now when you mitigate this del v1 that means when you co connect a compensator which is also drawing a current but 180 degree out of phase with respect to this load current uh, or load current uh, this component then you can mitigate this delta v1 okay now the question is how can we mitigate this delta v2 in order to mitigate this delta v2 this i x sin phi will not be uh, you know enough to mitigate this delta v1 we need to mitigate something more than this suppose if we consider this i sin phi is ic then this ic will not be enough for mitigating both del v1 and del v2 we have to supply this we have to design a compensator which can draw a current more than this ic okay suppose if we consider that that current is del ic then it should be del ic multiplied by uh, this x del ic multiplied by this x that um, uh, you know component of the current it should draw from the system so that del v2 will can be uh, mitigated and this process is called system compensation okay load reactive compensation and this is called system compensation okay so in summary we can write from this today's lecture load reactive compensation compensation is a process to mitigate the under voltage del v1 by supplying some amount of reactive power reactive power locally at the load end okay and system compensation system reactive compensation is a process by which we can make the load end voltage equal to the source end voltage number 3 is that reactive power compensation is a process to mitigate the under voltage reactive power compensation is a process to mitigate under voltage at the load end okay so this is what the summary of this lecture so we learned what is 
reactive power compensation, what is the significance of reactive power. Also, we also learn how can we do this reactive power compensation. Okay? So, reactive power compensation an important a approach or important process of the power system to mitigate some kind of under voltage okay, by locally supplying some amount of reactive power. This is one of the you know, uh, you know uh, task of a uh, compensator which we will be discussing in future okay, uh, in our power electronics based compensators. But this is not only the task of the power electronic based compensator because reactive power compensation is not only done to mitigate the voltage related issues like under voltage or over voltage even, but it is also useful during dynamic condition. Those things we will uh, study in future. Okay? So, up to this today, thank you for your attention.